I hope you all have joined and I can start with the today's session. Uh, today, I, yes, uh, good evening, ma'am. So today I'm going to discuss the chi square test. So as per the tradition, firstly, uh, firstly, I'll discuss the theoretical aspect of the chi square and then I'll come to the application part of SPSS uh, of a chi square using SPSS. Uh, so I think this is what I have uh, discussed yesterday. Just a minute. Give me a second. Uh, anyone, will you please confirm me my screen is visible or not? Yes, ma'am, it is visible. Yes, thank you so much, ma'am. So today I'm going to discuss the chi square test. So uh, yesterday I tried to explain you what are the components of any research study. Then I discussed the basics of SPSS in that I explained you that how we can uh, create a variable, how we can define a variable in SPSS. Then I also discussed that how we can import a file in SPSS. And then I explained you about the recording of the variables in SPSS and then the calculation of variables. This is what I discussed yesterday. Today I'm going to discuss chi square test. Before taking that, I'll discuss the non parametric test as chi square comes or is known as one of the non parametric tests. So uh, what is non-parametric test? Non-parametric tests are those tests which are distribution free. The tests which do not consider the parameters of population, such kind of tests are known as the non-parametric tests. Now, question comes when we can use non-parametric tests. So generally, whenever we are having the variables on nominal or ordinal scale. Yesterday I have discussed four types of four types of measurement scales. I explained you that there are four types of measurement scales, or we can measure variables on four scales: that is nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. So if we are having a variables on nominal or ordinal scale, in that case, we can go for the non-parametric test because we cannot apply parametric test on the variable which we have measured on nominal or ordinal scale next suppose we are having the attributes and variables in a particular study so in both the cases non-parametric tests are applicable so whenever we are dealing with the characteristics of variable that is attributes in that case generally non-parametric tests are suggested now question comes can we apply non-parametric test on variables so yes, there are certain conditions. In that case, we can apply non-parametric tests on variables also. That I'll discuss in the upcoming slide. Next, the sample size of the study uh, or the sample size of the study groups are unequal. Means when we are having more than two groups in any particular study, in any particular attribute or variable, and the sample size is not same, the sample size is unequal, generally we can apply the chi-square so, means chi square can be applied on equal size of the uh, groups also and on the unequal size of the group also. There is no problem, but some of the parametric tests are demanding that the sample size in groups, with whatever we are having, the sample size should be same. So, this is the main understanding about the chi square and about the non parametric test. Under the non-parametric test category, we can keep various tests like chi-square test. We can keep man whitney u test. We can keep crystal wallace test. We can use then Fredman test. We can use. So likewise, there is there are uh, so many tests which we can keep under the category of non-parametric test. So other condition uh, of the variable which I have told you that if we are having a variable in that case, can we use a parametric test? So answer is yes. The conditions are. So if we are having a variable which we have measured on interval or ratio scale, in that case, 
if those variables are violating the assumptions of parametric test so when i'll discuss the parametric test probably by tomorrow or day after tomorrow i'll start with the parametric test so i'll explain you there are certain assumptions in the parametric test generally a parametric test are requiring the normal distribution of the population so if your data is coming from the normal distribution in that case we can go for the parametric test but what if the data is not supporting this normal distribution kind of uh, assumptions or there are certain other assumptions also available like equal variance should be there between the groups like that so these are the some basic assumptions for the parametric test so if your data is violating such kind of assumptions in that case we can go for the non parametric test means if we have uh, plotted our data on a graph we have kept there a bell shaped curve on that particular data and it is showing us that the data is skewed data or data is kurtotic data in that case we will not apply the parametric test it is not suggestive to apply the parametric test on the not or the non normal normal distributed data or the skewed or kurtotic data so in that case we should not go for the parametric test and then as a option we are having available the non parametric test similarly as i said there is one more assumptions usually we are checking in case of parametric test and it is the equal variance or the homoscedasticity in that case also if this assumption is violated by our data in that case again we can go for the non parametric test so the conclusion of the slide is that when we are having a numeric data or when we are having a continuous scale data or interval or ratio scale data in that case also we can apply non parametric test if the data is not following the assumptions of the parametric test so i hope i am clear till this slide am i any doubt so far yes ma'am please ma'am go ahead yeah thank you so much everyone thank you now talking about coming to the agenda of the day that is chi square test you can see the symbol of chi it is clearly uh, visible i hope to uh, i hope to all of you it is a greek uh, letter which is uh, usually we can read as chi so it is chi square test which is given by the sir, sir karl pearson so karl pearson has given this chi square test to us it is comes under the non parametric test category because if your data is not considering the distribution of your uh, population in that case we can call it as a non parametric test so when your data is distribution free in that case we can apply non parametric test now we will see uh, further that what are the conditions in which condition we can apply the chi square test so if we are interested to find the association between the variables in that case we can apply the chi square test so one more other condition is when we want to check whether the expected frequency is same as the observed frequency or not so in that case also we can apply the chi square test so generally we are interested to find the significant difference in the expected and observed frequency this would be the case of chi square test also if we want to check whether there is any association between the attributes or the variables in that case also we can go for the chi square test now talking about as i have already discussed all these things but again i am repeating these two things in this particular slide the uh, two important things we need to note it about the chi square test is that chi square test only test whether two individual variables are independent in the binary format binary format means the dichotomous format that is the yes no format or zero one format if the data is available in this form in that case we can go for the chi square test similarly whenever we are having the frequencies means when we are having the we do not have the uh, numeric variables but when we are having the new frequencies or the count values in that case also we can go for the chi square test but when we are having the data in the percentages form in that case we cannot apply the chi square test because percentage will uh, consider as the ratio data and chi square is not appropriate to apply there if you are having the percentages am i clear on this particular slide may i move ahead yes yes yeah thank you 
now talking about the hypothesis so for a uh, chi square test we can make our hypothesis like there is no relationship between the categorical variables because i have yesterday discussed this thing i have shown you the bifurcation of the measurement scales in that i have shown you the categorical uh, there was one particular category was the categorical and under the categorical we can keep nominal and the ordinal scale right so if we have measured a variable on a nominal scale or on a ordinal scale that we can treat or that we can name as a categorical scale also so if we are having a categorical scale variable or we are having a categorical variable and we are interested to find the relationship between them we can make our hypothesis like there are no relationships between the categorical variables right now there is a difference between because in the last at the last day i'm going to discuss the correlation and regression so generally we are knowing this thing that when we talk about correlation from the name itself it is quite clear that correlation is we are interested to find the relationship between the variables so chi square test is different from the correlation here when we talk about chi square test chi square test is help us to find the association between the variables or association between the uh attributes rather than variables i must say so that is why chi square test only in, uh, give you the association among the attributes and it will not help you out to find the relationship between the variables so this is what we need to keep in our in our mind while understanding the concept of chi square test now say for example suppose we are having a question like we want to measure whether there is an association between readers choice and magazine type so here you can see we are able to find here two things first is the reader choice second thing is the magazine type so reader choice means whether the particular reader is preferring to read particular type of magazine or not so maybe the answer will come in the form of yes or no magazine type maybe it can be any type like uh, the magazine entertainment magazine or the comic magazine anything it can be like right so that way we can understand that magazine type is again a categorical variable or the nominal scale variable and reader choice will again here would be the nominal scale variable because we are collecting the responses in form of yes and no right so that way we want to find the association between these two variables so this would be the case of the chi square test now this particular question can be formulated in this form also that is whether reader choice is related to magazine type or we can make the question like whether readers choice is dependent on magazine type so this way any of the formulation of the question is possible in case of chi square test we need to keep concentration or focus on this thing that what is the measurement scale of the two attributes which we are considering here so here we are considering readers choice and second one we are considering as a magazine type so both we are measuring on the categorical scale so when we are having these variables on a categorical scale suggest suggestive is to go for the chi square test and we are interested to find here the association between these two attributes now using these questions we can also formulate our hypothesis like there is no association between the magazine type and the readers choice or i can uh, write my hypothesis like readers choice is not related to magazine type or i can write reader's choice is independent of magazine type so all three hypotheses are almost similar or they are tailing as or the uh, the meaning of all three hypotheses is almost same so that way here you can find whether we are finding the association or relations or we are finding the independency between the two attributes in that case the appropriate test would be the chi square test am i clear till this slide any question so far yes may i move ahead any questions yes, yes, yes. yeah thank you thank you now say for example suppose you can see here we have taken i have make a, a made a particular table in that i have taken first column for the magazine type and second column for the readers choice so you can see all the types of magazines are listed here and here in the readers choice you can see here that 75 people out of 200 are saying that they are preferring to read the business and finance type of magazines right 
similarly to uh, uh, 5800 uh, 58 people out of 200 are saying they are preferring to read the cooking and food type of magazines then 67 people are saying that they are preferring to read entertainment type of magazine so that way this is the whatever the figures here uh, we are looking at the table these are nothing but these are the frequencies right so here if we are interested to see there are two things can be possible here in this particular question now first thing if we want to see that all the frequencies are equally distributed along all the categories of magazine type that means we are interested interested to find here whether these observed frequencies are same as the expected frequencies or not in that case again we go we can go for the chi square test or if we are interested to find whether the business uh, or whether the magazine type is independent of reader's choice or not that also is possible but in whatever two things i have said there is a difference in both the things difference is as there are two types of chi square tests so both are the two different cases in which particular case you will go for which type of chi square test now that i'll i'm going to discuss so uh, example as i said uh, about this particular thing so the other way of making your uh, particular table is like uh, you can make your table like this also maybe we are collecting the responses from the male and female and we are uh, asking them whether question is whether the female prefers cooking and food magazine more than males so in that case we are collecting the data from male and female and we are asking them whether you are uh, uh, means whether you are uh, preferring to read the magazine uh, of a cookery cookery magazine or something like that so people are giving answer in the terms of yes and no so that way we can see out of 33 male 12 are saying that yes they prefer such kind of magazines 21 are saying no similarly out of 82 females 68 are saying yes 14 are saying no so that way in the yes category we are having total 80 uh, observations or total 80 people are saying that yes they are preferring to read the cookery type of magazine 35 five of people are saying that they are not preferring such kind of magazines right similarly we can say out uh, 33 are the male in the data and the 82 are the female in the data right so that way this is one more way of uh, showing your data but i'll explain you this type of table is known as uh, something else that i'll discuss you in the upcoming slide now coming to the chi square test so till now i think you people are would be very much acquainted with this particular thing that whenever we are having frequencies and whenever we are having the data on a nominal or ordinal scale in that case we can go for the chi square test and when we are interested to find relationships that is association between the categorical variables in that case we can go for the chi square test now there are certain assumptions for chi square test these assumptions are very important you need to understand all the assumptions only two main assumptions are there for the chi square test the very first assumption is that individual observations should be independent of each other so for this particular assumption you need to be careful only while collecting the data that you should collect the data from one person only once on once only right so from one person if we will collect the data once that means we are not making any dependency in the observations and that way this particular first assumption can be met of the chi square test so you have to be cautious while collecting the data that you should not collect the data from the same person again and again if you will doing this that means you are violating the first assumption of chi square test second assumption is expected cell frequencies should not be too small that is the expected cell count should not be less than 5 in the 20 percent of cells so here we need to see that in at least 20 percent of cell the uh, expected count that is the expected frequency should not be less than 5 so suppose there are uh, four uh, expected frequency cell available so we need to see uh, what would be the 20% of the, those four uh, cells? So it would be around 0.8, or we can say in uh, one cell, at least in one cell, the count should not be less than five, right? So that way, this assumption can be met. So uh, in SPSS, we do not need to do this calculation, although 
because in SPSS, when we will apply the chi square test, it will give you this particular assumption checking also. So, how you will check that, that I'll explain you when we will go for the SPSS and we will apply the chi square test there, right? So, uh, if these uh, rules are violated by your data, in that case, it is uh, suggested, so do not go for the chi square test. And in that case, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, what I can say, report the uh, Fisher's exact test. So if you are making your notes, you can write it down. If the assumptions of chi-square test is violated by the data, in that case, we can report the Fisher's exact test results. And that results will also come there in the chi-square table, right? So you do not need to go anywhere. SPSS will give you the Fisher's exact test value also. Is it fine? Is it clear to everyone? Yes. Yeah, thank you. So now I'll talk about the contingency table. So that table which I have shown you previously, I'm going back this. This is nothing, but this is known as the contingency table. So contingency table is what? It is a cross tabulation of your data. So when we are having our two variables available, so that way we can jot down two variables in a two-way table. One variable would be uh, come in the rows and second variable would come in the column. So this is known as the contingency table. And that way we will do the frequency distribution or we will do count the frequencies according to the combination of the categories. This is known as the contingency table. So again, I'm like taking you back. Here you can see what I want to say here. So here uh, we are knowing this thing that we are talking about a gender because male and female we are talking about. So here we have taken one variable gender and these are the two categories of the variable male and female. Now whether these two people or these two categories are preferring to read a cooking and food type of magazine or not. So we are asking this question in terms of yes and no. So that is why you can see the second variable we have taken here preference for the reading of the magazine cooking and food type of magazine, right? So that way, yes and no. Now combination means male and yes category. So how many of the males are saying that yes, they are reading such kind of magazine, so it is 12. So that way in the combination, we are calculating these frequencies, we are calculating these counts, and this way we are preparing, preparing the contingency table. Although in SPSS, you do not need to do this practice, SPSS will give you this particular thing. But I think, uh, am I clear on this? Any doubt so far? No, ma'am. Please go yeah. ahead. Yeah, thank you. So you can see here, say, for example, a researcher wants to measure popularity of the film stars between the males and females or the between the male and female fans. So that way they can collect the data from the male and female fans. So these are the five uh, well-known uh, film stars of the uh, Bollywood industry, which I have taken here. Now you can see this is the frequency. So total, uh, total we have total 300 respondents, right? 150 are the male fans and 150 are the female fans. So out of 150, 40 uh, males uh, are uh, out of uh, 150, 40 males are liking Rithik Roshan. So like much we can read this particular table and we can make our hypothesis like that there is no significant difference between the number of male and female fans for the various film stars. So uh, this is again the example of the contingency table. Now talking about the chi-square test formula. So I think it is very well known. Those who are usually applying chi-square test using the Excel till now, they are knowing or maybe those who have already studied uh, in the MBA or in the statistics somewhere they have studied the formula also. So this is the formula chi-square is equal to summation O minus E square divided by E. O, in some books, we can find this as FO also. E can be represented as FE also. So O or FO is known as observed frequency. E or FE is represented as the expected frequency, right? So that way, we can solve this to get the value of chi square. Now, you can see I have written here the two formula for the E. E is what? If E is the expected count. Observed means we will collect the data from the field or from the observation. We can collect the, this data. That would be the observed. But now we need to calculate the expected frequency. So expected frequency can be calculated in the two ways. You can see here total observations divided by number of observations. It will give you E. Other way is 
row total into column total divided by grand total. This will also give you the E. Uh, why we are taking these two formula for the calculation of E? Because there are there are two types of chi-square test. One is known as the goodness of faith, and second is known as the independence of attribute. So in one case, we will apply this formula, and in second case, we will apply this formula. Although this is for the manual calculation, but being a researcher, we need to know the conceptual aspects also about the test for the purpose. I'm showing you this. Going ahead, usually in the Excel, those who are calculating uh, the chi-square, so this type of table we need to make O, E, O minus E, O minus E square, O minus E square divided by E. So that way, the sum of the last column will give you the value of chi-square. Now, uh, as uh, this is the first day of the hypothesis testing, so till now I have not discussed uh, the as a thumb rule of the acceptance or the reduction of the hypothesis. So those who are making notes, they can write uh, in their notebook that there are two rules or there are two thumb rule of the acceptance or the rejection of the hypothesis. First is based on the manual case calculation. So I'm talking right now for the manual calculation. So if you are making a, your note, you can write, if your calculated value is less than tabulated value, in that case, we need we will not reject the null hypothesis, right? I hope you have written when the calculated value is less than tabulated value, we will not reject the null hypothesis. And vice versa, if calculated value is greater than tabulated value, we will accept or sorry, we will not accept the null hypothesis, right? So that way, these are the thumb rule of the chi-square test or for any of the statistical tests. Right, so this would be applicable on every test, whatever the uh, thumb rule I have explained to you for the manual calculations. Now, second uh, thumb rule is based on the p-value. So here you can see this is the table of the chi-square test, right? So uh, from uh, as I have told you, uh, this is the as I in, here in the uh, here you can see it is written the calculated is less than tabulated. So calculated we have uh, find here that we have found this calculated value using this particular table. But from where we can get the tabulated value? So here you can see the ready-made table values are already available. You can easily do the Google for this and you can find this particular table of the chi-square test, right? So for getting the table value of chi-square you need to have the two parameters. Which two parameters we need to have? First one is the degrees of freedom. And second one, we need to have the level of significance. So at what percent or at what percent level of significance you are testing your hypothesis, you need to pre-decide that. And second, what is the uh, degrees of freedom? So in case of goodness of fit, the degrees of freedom formula is N minus one, right? So using that, you can find if suppose there are total 10 observations, so n minus 1 would be 10 minus 1, that is 9. Similarly, at 5% level of significance, if you are testing your hypothesis, so you can find this is the 5% or 0 0.05 is known as the 5%. So the intersection point of these two things, that is the, you can go parallelly to the ninth row and you will come down to the 0 0.05. And wherever these two figures will meet, this would become your the table value. So it is 16.919. So that way you can find the table value. And then you can compare your calculated value with the table value. And you can decide whether you are going ahead with the hypothesis or not. Right? Now, as I am uh, 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 last five minutes, I am telling you types of chi-square test, right? So I am explaining you there are two types of chi-square test. First one is the goodness of fit chi-square test. So goodness of fit chi-square test is also known as the one. Uh, uh, I need. I can say it's one-way chi-square test. One-way chi-square test meaning is when we are having a single nominal variable, single nominal scale variable, or single categorical variable. In that case, we can apply the goodness of fit. So I need to uh, I need to inform you here at the end of the session today. I'll uh, put the poll for all of you with uh, five questions. So whatever I am discussing you, the poll will be based on that only. You need to give the answers to that poll, right? So please be uh, uh, little uh, I can say attentive and listen it carefully what I am telling you because the 
poll would be based on the questions uh, what, on the things whatever i'm discussing in the session right so i'm telling you that goodness of fit is what goodness of fit is considering only single categorical variable and when we are interested to find that whether there is any significant difference in the expected and the observed frequencies in that case we can go for the goodness of fit right so in uh, in that case means in case of goodness of fit we can make our hypothesis like that there is no significant difference between the observed and the expected frequencies or expected count or expected value so that way this is known as your null hypothesis alternatively we can say that there is a significant difference between the observed and the expected count right so this is a way of defining or of formulating your null and the alternate hypothesis in case of goodness of fit am i clear till now any doubt so far yes ma'am can you be a little slow actually this is very new for me maybe for others little slow yeah yeah i can be but if you can uh, stop me ma'am wherever you are not understanding you are not getting me and uh, you can also tell me from where i need to restart again so do i need to repeat it again or do i need to repeat something here yeah if you can please uh, explain this slide again this types of chi square yes okay so if you are making yeah yes. so if you are making your net i am uh, making your notes ma'am i am a little slow here i'll i am asking you please write goodness of it right then right when we are having a single categorical variable means when we are having one categorical variable in that case we will go for the goodness of it is it fine yes yes yeah. ma'am next thing when we are interested to find the thing this that whether the expected frequency is same as the observed frequency or not in that case also we will go for the goodness of fit so means when we want to compare observed and expected frequency we should go for goodness of fit is it fine yes ma'am yeah so now if this is a case in that case how we will make our null hypothesis so null hypothesis would be there is no significant difference between the expected and the observed frequency and vice versa we can write our alternate hypothesis as there is a significant difference between observed and expected frequency is it fine now yes ma'am yes so i hope may i shift to the next slide now ma'am is fine we also call line of good fit no goodness of fit is also called as line of good fit uh i have not heard this line uh, we, we use this so line of good fit is the same thing goodness of fit which we tell them maybe 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 sir maybe i have not the same authors different different authors give their own versions so yes yes yeah. maybe we can call it may some people line are calling it as a maybe yeah, line of good fit actually we call yeah maybe we can call it as a one way chi square test also yeah, one, way one, way yeah. test, one way chi square one way means the one variable right yeah, one variable we take right yeah. yes, thank you yes. yeah thank you sir uh, so coming to the next slide talking about the second type of chi square test is it is the test of association or independence of attributes right so whenever we are finding the association means from the name it is quite clear association would be between the two things right so when we are talking about the second type of chi square test in that case we should have two categorical variable right two categorical independent variables we must have to apply the test of association or independence of attribute attributes one in the same thing right as sir said some books we can find test of association association in some books we can find independence of attributes also so that way if we want to see whether the attributes which we are considering whether those two attributes are independent or not or whether those two categorical variable are independent or not in that case we can go for the chi square second type of chi square test that is the two way test or the test of association when say for example when we are interested to see whether the gender performance uh, or means whether the uh, there is any difference in the gender performance and the driving test or if i want to say whether the gender and driving uh, no i mean i means i mean i need to say this thing whether the driving test is independent of gender or not so in that case 
we can go for the test of association means when we want to see whether this driving test performance is based on the gender means whether the male are performing better or female are performing better in that case we can say this is a case of test of association so two attributes we are having first one is the gender second one we are having is the driving test right so that way in that case we can go for the second type of chi square test test of association so ma'am i hope you have written it down may i go ahead yes please yeah thank you now how we can perform chi square test in spss so these are the two different ways to perform the chi square test in spss so both the ways i'll show you one by one when we will move to the uh, spss now uh, i think this i can escape fisher's exact test is the same uh we will get with the help of the same way uh, the way we are applying the chi square test in spss okay so this is the case which i am going to discuss today for the same i have given you the file also in the whatsapp group so those who are having the or those who are available on the whatsapp group i expect them please download the file which i have given to you to perform the chi, uh, square test using the spss right so the case is that i am reading the case for you and then we will go to the spss to perform chi square test okay fine can we go ahead yes yes ma'am yeah so here i am reading the case for you or you can also read it with me the case is the makers of candy crush app are looking to measure the engagement of the users with candies of different colors so that they can use only those colors in the candies which are preferred by the users to measure this they showed candies of the different colors to the users and asked them to tap on their favorite color number of time they like the frequency of touch oblique clicks for each color is given below so it is quite clear from this particular situation that the candy crush game uh, i think which is very uh, famous game usually uh, so for the purpose uh, maybe the candy crush uh, um, makers have decided this thing may be the change in the candy colors can uh, use or can increase the users so that way they have introduced or uh, they have surveyed this thing that they have introduced five colors to the user present users and they have asked them please give the as much as please tick uh, or please click the particular button as much as time you are wa you want us to introduce that color in the candies right so the colors are blue pink green brown and yellow and these are the frequencies means blue color was hit by uh, hit around 25 times pink 20 times green 20 times brown 15 times yellow 20 times now we need to formulate the hypothesis at 5% level of significance and also we need to check the hypothesis so this is what i have discussed uh, for the chi square one sample test now i am taking you to the spss file and here i am expecting you please tell me uh, anyone if you can uh, tell me whether the uh, spss screen is visible to all of you or not yes ma'am visible yeah thank you just a minute so now here uh -huh, what is happening just a minute yeah so here you can see we are having only a single variable available with the name color and then you can see one is coming around 25 times similarly you can go down you can see two is coming 45 till 45 means it is around 20 times it is coming and likewise you can see three four and five also right so that way we can find that these are the counts given to us now if we want to perform chi square test so the first thing is what would be the for uh, hypothesis for this particular test can any one of you tell me what uh, would be the chi square uh, for uh, hypothesis here in case of this particular case yes mam single variable means uh, null hypothesis okay single variable means null hypothesis yes no i am not getting you ma'am will you please explain me again okay. what do you want to say uh, you are asking which type of test should be applied here no i am asking about what would be the null hypothesis so uh, ma'am would it be that there is no relation 
there is no relation okay anyone else there is significant difference between observed and observed. No relation yes between... very correct very right. correct give me a second i'm sharing a file with all of you i hope my word file is visible right yes, visible yeah yes, so here i'm writing the hypothesis suppose i'm writing here there is no significant difference in the observed and expected frequencies for candy colors right yes ma'am similarly if i am copying this to save our time pasting here and now i am making my alternate hypothesis so in place of no i am writing there is significant difference there is a significant difference right so that way this is the formulation of the hypothesis now how we can perform chi square test using sqss so for the purpose again i am coming back here now what you need to do i'll i'll show you various ways of performing chi square test there are two things because my, many a time it happens the uh, what type of uh, data is given in which particular form that you need to see firstly so here we can see total 100 frequencies are given uh, 25 times 1 is coming then 20 times 2 is coming likewise you can go in the variable view firstly this is my request to all of you here you can click on this these three dots and you please check one stands for blue two stands for pink three stands for green four stands for brown five stands for yellow is it fine clear to everyone yes ma'am yes. yes now so this way we are knowing this thing that 25 times one means one is suppose i think stand for the brown or suppose for the blue so 25 for the blue yeah. so that means 25 uh, frequencies are given uh, by the user for the blue color right so to apply the chi square test that is it would be a, a one way chi square test or it would be a goodness of it i think it is clear to everyone right no doubt in that any doubt you can identify no this is a, a one way chi square test so goodness of chi square test is it fine any doubt so far in that oh uh, ma'am yes uh even the example which you had uh, given of the uh, readers and the magazine even that example fits for the same uh, test uh uh sir one give, give me a second i'll take you to the that also as as when i was discussing that i have told you one more thing there i said this thing that in that particular case you know, there is both the possibilities are there right so i need to show you the slides again just a minute the table i need to show you here yes you can see this is what we you are talking about right yes ma'am yes so here you can see if we are considering this particular thing so firstly this is what this is the observed frequency is given to us right so if we are considering this particular table and uh, we are writing this thing that uh, there is no significant difference in the expected and the observed frequency for the preference of mag uh, mag magazine type right in that case also you can perform the one way chi square test but if suppose uh, you are interested to see whether the magazine type preference is in or the whether the reader's choice is independent of magazine type or not in that case when you are considering two attributes in that case you can apply the second test that is the test of association is it fine is it clear sir but okay. the but the way data is given it is suggestive uh, suggesting us that we should go for the goodness of it okay fine yes thank you yeah thank you sir so coming back to the uh, uh, spss file now i am telling you that how you can apply the one way chi square test or the goodness of it chi square test so for the purpose you need to explore the analyze menu you need to click on the analyze menu then you can go to the non parametric test so those who are not performing they can note down the steps 
so maybe in future this can help you out you can write you can go to the analyze menu then you can click on the non parametric test then from the box you can select legacy dialogs and parallel to this this you can go for the chi square is it fine or you can take the uh, pick of this also if you want may i click on chi square yes ma'am yes so once i have clicked on the chi square the uh, dialog box is popping in front of us here you can see only one variable is there in the sheet so this is listed at the left hand side you need to only shift it to the right hand side then you have shifted your variable to the right hand side now you can see in the bottom two boxes at the left box it is given expected range so by default get from data is selected right meaning meaning of this is that that we are giving an instruction to spss and that expected expected range should be taken from the data whatever we are supplying here this is the meaning of this second option is saying use specified range means here we can define that the expected value should be in that particular range so the lower and the upper value we can give here and that way we are giving an instruction to spss that the expected count should be in this particular range so this is the meaning of this particular second option so suggestive is go with the by default option is it fine this option is clear any doubt no ma'am okay coming to the next box expected values it is showing us all categories are equal so that means uh, we are giving instruction to the spss that whatever the categories are available in my color variable for that keep the equal expected count right this is the meaning of the by default option or else if you want to define expected value for that you can come to this values once you will come to this you can define the expected values by your own for all the categories you are having in the color variable right so again suggestive is we need to go with always the by default option so means meaning of this particular box is that only shifting from your variable from left box to the right box apart from that you do not need to do anything here is it clear to everyone yes ma'am yeah then you need to only press on the okay button once you will press okay you would be able to see the output in the output window it is showing us for all the colors it is showing the as the frequencies right so first column is of the observed frequency it is showing that blue observed uh, blue frequency is 25 for the pink color frequency is 20 for green it is 20 for brown 15 and for yellow it is again 20 similarly you can see expected count for all the five categories of color is same because if you can recall in the uh, spss window in the in the chi square uh, box we have defined this thing that keep the expected count equal for all the categories so for the purpose what it has done it has divided this 100 by the categories so total five categories are there 100 by 5 it is 20 throughout all the five categories and if you can recall the slides also i'm showing you this again to you in the slides i have shown you two formula for expected count so this is the first formula which has applied by the spss because this is the goodness of fit so in that case total observations divided by number of observations so that way you can see here total is the 100 and five categories are there so 100 by 5 it is 20 is the expected count for all the frequency residual meaning is it is a difference of observed and expected it is coming here now the chi square value is 2.5 degrees of freedom is 4 so if you can recall i have told you this thing for goodness of fit the degrees of freedom formula is n minus 1 so here we are having total 5 get degrees so 5 minus 1 that is 4 would be the degrees of freedom right and this is the p value or the significant value which is coming as 0.645 so now we need to see or we need to make take a decision on the basis of this significant value but before proceeding with the uh, conclusion or the decision part firstly i need to explain you the second assumption of chi square test as i said 
the output in the output window of SPSS, we will get the assumption of the chi square test. So you can find here it is showing zero cells have expected frequencies less than five. So you can see here in all the five cells, the expected count is greater than five. Is it clear? So that is why the this particular percent is coming as zero. So that means there is no violation of the chi square test. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So now you can see we are making decision on the basis of this significant value. This p value is 0.645. So I think I forgot to tell you the thumb rule of the p value. So you can note it down in your notebooks if you are making a note or if you want to note down somewhere, you can write it this. Like if your p value is less than level of significance, so you can write if p is less than, I am helping you out to write this. I'm writing here. If p is less than, level of significance right mm. usually p we write in a small letter if p is less than level of significance in that case we do not accept the null hypothesis and if your p is greater than level of significance we do not reject the null hypothesis that this h naught or h zero right so this is the thumb rule for the p value or the significant value i hope you people have noted it down right right may i go ahead yes ma'am yeah so now you can check whatever the significant of p value we are getting here it is 0.645 so if it is 0.645, so I can write here 0.645. And level of significance was what? Can anyone tell me? What was the level of significance? Right? It is 5% or it is 0 0.05. So we need to compare this. So we can call this that this is greater than 0 0.05, right? So if this is a case, it is telling us do not reject the null hypothesis. That means you need to go with the null hypothesis. And that way we can conclude this thing that there is no significant difference in the observed and fre expected frequencies for the candy colors, right? So this way you can perform the goodness of fit using the SPSS. Is it fine? Is it clear to everyone? Yes. Yes. Now I'm taking you to the uh one more aspect of the data suppose this is you have seen that this was the representation of your data what if your the representation of data is in some other way so for that i am telling you to perform the uh, frequency distribution on the particular color variable so what you need to do go to the analyze menu then select descriptive statistics and then go to the frequencies only fine analyze descriptive statistics and then frequencies is it fine? May I click? May I click? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So now I have uh, done this. Now you can see one variable is only available. You need to shift that variable using the arrow key in the right box. And then you do not need to do nothing here. Except shifting a variable from this box to this box. You can see here display frequency table is by default checked by the spaces if not if suppose it is not checked in that case you need to check this right you need to check this particular box and then you need to press ok to generate the frequency distribution of your variable so although we have found this in the previous table also but for letting you know that how you can find the frequency distribution using spaces i have explained you this thing now you can see here that the frequencies is coming as um, 25, 20, 20, 15, and 20, right? I think someone has forgot to. Uh, Mahek, uh, I think Mahek, yes, thank you, Mahek. So now, what you need to do, this is the other way of the data. If suppose your data is available in this particular form, so I'm entering the same data firstly in my file. So I'm coming here. I'm writing here, total five categories are there, one, two, three, four, and five, right? So I have written here firstly the categories. 
along with that i'm writing the frequencies 15 sorry 25 20 20 and i think 15 and it was a 20 i need to cross check i have written correctly or not 25 20 20 yeah it is correct then uh, those who are I hope they have made the same entries in the upcoming or in the next two columns right may i go ahead do i need to wait yes ma'am you can go yeah thank you sir so now you can come to the variable view i suggest you go to the variable view and i am writing the first variable as color and second as frequency right now decimal there is no need of this i am making it zero that you can do now i am copying these categories and trying to paste here yes done now coming to the measure for color it should be nominal and for frequency it should be scale fine this is the changes i have made in my file i hope everyone has made those who are performing done changes are clear any confirmation ma'am yes, can ma you show the third column third row again please yeah i have written given the name to my third row as frequency right decimals i have kept as zero then coming to the measure i have kept the measure for the frequency as a scale and for the color as nominal only these changes i have made and also for the color what is the meaning of 1 2 3 4 5 so what i have done i have copied these uh, values here from one uh, from the color one and i have copied down to the color this is what i have um, changes i have made is it fine yes ma'am yeah so now i'm telling you if this is the picture means if your data is in this particular form so how you will proceed in case of goodness of it so that is the other format of the data and for that uh, firstly what we will do we will apply here the same way the chi square test so i'll go as uh, ask you to go to the analyze menu then non parametric test legacy dialog and then chi square the same uh, direction or the same uh, track you need to follow to go to the chi square test i hope you everyone have found it may i click on this yes ma'am yes once i have done this firstly i am resetting my this uh, particular whatever setting i have made here so i have reset that now i am shifting my color variable to the test variable list and as i have explained to you previously you do not need to make any changes in the two uh, bottom boxes whatever is the by default uh, settings we will go with that only so you do not need to make any changes here so far except uh, shifting your variable from this box to the right box and you can press okay once you will press okay you would be able to see some different type of results you can see previously we were getting the uh, sorry we were getting the chi square value as 2.5 right but here what is the problem it is giving us chi square value as 0 and also it is not giving us because for blue it is taking one for pink one green all it is taking as 1 1 because uh one is coming one time two is coming one time three is coming one time in that particular column so now if this type of data is given to us how you will deal that, deal that right so for the purpose again i am coming to the same uh data file i hope till here i am clear to everyone may i go ahead from here any confirmation so far Oh yes, yes ma'am but what was the difference i couldn't understand what was the difference in the previous when we were getting the value of chi square as something and now getting zero i think you can clearly see ma'am it is written here blue coming one pink one 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 expected count is also one because five by five it is giving you one 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 and the residual means difference of this is coming one so if you can see the formula i think you need to see the formula now formula is what o minus e square divided by e so here o minus e that is residual is coming as zero yes or no this residual is coming as zero 
so if there is zero at the numerator so it is quite clear your chi square value would be zero so it is coming as same got it yes i so, got it but what did we change that for the same data uh, the values are coming uh, like so this so you need to see clearly what i have done here previously we have shifted color one but this time i have shifted color only in color it is written 1 2 3 4 5 and it is quite clear sp is understanding uh, very uh, clearly that one is coming one two is coming one three uh, yes. four and five also yes. coming yes. as one one so they are calculate in that sp is calculating frequency of 1 2 3 4 5 as 1 1 1 1 1 so these now are the I observed understand. frequency got it now, now what is the problem uh, now, because this is not the correct thing so how we will uh, solve this particular problem so to solve this problem you need to weigh the cases how you will weigh the cases means you need to weigh whatever these categories are given you need to uh, as means you need to link these categories with their frequencies so how you will link that so for the purpose you need to go to the data mining in the data menu you need to see the last option is coming as weight cases clearly visible i hope right is it visible everyone right may i click on weight cases yes yes yes, yes. ma'am you can click on that after clicking on that you can see at the right hand side it is showing do not weight cases but we want to weight cases so you need to select the second radio button or second option right so once you will check that or uh, select that particular option you would be able to see that this viral dialog box is active now right so here you need to only shift your frequencies to the particular box using the arrow key done and once you are doing this you need to only press okay once you will press okay spss will give you the uh in the output window it will give you a message wait by frequencies right and you can come to the file now you can see wait on is uh, i am moving my cursor you need to see at the right hand side bottom right hand side i am moving my mouse it is clearly showing us wait on right that means now all these categories are weighted with the frequencies now so now if this is the situation we have made now we will see what is the changes we are getting in the results right so again you can use this shortcut button it will give you few of the pre previously used options which you have explored in the spss so here you need to click on the chi square test done now you can reset it firstly then you can shift your color variable to the test variable list and then you can press okay is it fine i hope uh, the speed is fine may i press okay yes ma'am we got yeah, the yeah. result yeah thank you so you can press okay now once you will press okay you can see the changes it is again coming same right got it so you need to weigh the cases once you are having such kind of uh, data format available for uh, the goodness of fit data right clear to everyone yes ma'am yeah so if it is fine i am am suggesting you everyone to open the next sheet which i have given to you uh can anyone tell me the name of my sheet second sheet i think uh, yeah education dog owner i think right word uh, excel sheet i have given you second sheet any confirmation yes ma'am yes, yes ma'am yes means you people have got it so firstly here i explain you uh, because yesterday one of you have asked me about what if we are taking the data from the google sheet right so can we import the same data yes you can import the same data in the spss so suppose uh, this is the data uh, suppose we have collected through the google form right this is the excel sheet i have drawn uh, i have taken from the spss suppose right so now in that case firstly i'll suggest you do the coding of your data firstly right so how you will do the coding so for example here i am coming for the first variable that is gender so what i have done here i am selecting my column here so i hope everyone has selected the column and i think this is everyone everyone can perform along with me because this is a excel those who are i think everyone is having the excel right yes ma'am yes so i am expecting everyone to perform this along with me select the column 
after that press control f control f means it will give you the find and replace box right and here firstly i am writing female and i am clicking on the replace button and suppose i want to give two to the female category so this is what i have done here is it fine is it okay everyone have uh, done this um, uh, with me everyone is with me here may i press next button now again i am repeating select the gender column press control f in the find what type female then uh, click on the replace button and in the replace with type 2 then yes ma'am yeah then you can press replace all once you will do that it is giving you a message 10 replacements are done right now in place of uh, female you can write it as a male now in find what you can write male and in the replace with you can write one and then you can press replace all so again 10 replacements were done by the spaces that way we have coded our gender variable is it fine can yes, i go ahead yeah now you can select the next column pet ownership right so here in the find what you can type yes so suppose for yes i am giving one so i am replacing all the yes by one seven replacements were done now in the find what i am writing no and i am replacing no with suppose zero and i am replacing all it is coming as 13 replacements were made right coming to the education now in education suppose i am writing ug as one pressing replace all then then pg pg replacing with two replace all twelve replacements and lastly other other thank you sir three. other is yeah very three. good thank you it's thank three you. yeah thank you sir so you can replace all and then press okay and then you can close this so now your file is all ready right it is all set to bring it to the spss you can save your file right you can close it now i am again coming back to the same file here i am pressing this particular icon open data icon and here i need to see uh, although by default my chi square box is open here from where i want to pick my data this particular folder is showing me right so i suggest all of you if not so whatever is the location of your file in the look in you need to set that location and in the files of type you need to set it as a excel done and then i can see education dog owner file is available here that i can select and press on open so once i'll do that spss will start importing the data in spss it is taking few seconds yeah it is showing me yes this is what we have coded right you can press okay and that way the same data you can see in spss i hope it is visible to everyone right process is easy i think ma'am can you explain the importing step again you can go to this open data uh, dialog box on this open data icon you can click on in the look in you need to give the location of your file whether your file is in the on the desktop or in the download where, wherever it is you need to set that location you need to know that where is your file right so the location you need to give here then in the files of type you need to set it as a excel as i have given you a excel file right and then whatever is the name of your file you can select that file and you can click on open is it fine ma'am ma yes can you explain retrieve file from repository is given here in the last Sorry? down down is given retrieve file from repository i mean not clicking there right under the table no here no, the previous table issue no chi square table issue showed this no no not this yeah, yeah no previous one which you showed after changing to excel Mm, I'm not getting, sir. From um, where uh, you are asking me? No, actually, you showed us the how to go to Chi Square, then pick up this thing. No data from you told down. You should go and make it Excel. Under, okay. Under, yeah. Under Here. The, yeah. Down. No. Just go down. Right. Blue color one. No, yeah. No, not inside that. Uh, this thing. Right under it. Just leave that. Just uh, don't come out of the table. Yeah. 
Okay. Retrieve, retrieve file from repository is given. Yeah, what is that actually? Oh, uh, oh, I need to check that current connection none. Okay, I need to check that, sir. I am not me, knowing. Maybe know a repository meaning is that, sir. Uh, usually, whatever softwares we are downloading, right? So they are having their own repository. They are having their own file set available for the practice purpose of the users. So in the repository, possibly, uh, maybe when you have downloaded this SPSS, you need to explore there. There would be a set of files available already. That okay. you can use for your own purpose. So that would be the meaning of repository, and that way you know, we can use those files for our practice purpose. We can bring from there and try to. Yeah, to it would be usually it is always available in every software. Even okay. when I'm talking about R and I'm talking about Python etc. Usually yeah. I teach also that things, those things. So in that also usually uh, some inbuilt data sets are available. So that is, it is that only. So some inbuilt files would be available for you. Some repository would be available for you that you can use. And since you told you teach R in Python, I will, I'll wait for your these classes also, ma'am. <laughs> for that, you need to request Ajay sir, sir. No, Ajay sir is also here only. He'll be hearing my words, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, in okay, range. okay. Okay, definitely humble he'll request. do. Humble request. Yeah. It's very yeah, beneficial yeah. for everyone. Yeah, definitely, sir. He'll do. I think last year we have done one uh, FDP on uh, 10 days FDP on R. I have done. So I need think I'll we will request at the end to the sir uh, to organize one more. Right, sure, sir. Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. So I hope you people have now brought your data in the SPSS. Now we are moving ahead. And now, firstly, I'll give you a task here. Uh, I want to check here. Uh, I want to take two variables here. First is gender, and second is the pet owner. I want to check whether the pet ownership is independent of gender or not. So can anyone tell me what would be the way of making the null hypothesis here? How we can make null hypothesis considering gender and pet ownership? There is no statistical association between gender and pet ownership. Yes, correct. Good, sir. May I know the name? Dr. Howard. Okay, thank you so much, sir. There is no association between gender and pet ownership, right? Or you can make your null hypothesis as pet ownership is independent of gender. That is, this way, these are the two ways of making your null hypothesis in case of independence of attributes or test of association. So here we are considering two categorical variables, right? Is it clear? Fine? Yes. So now we are moving ahead with the file which we have imported here. Now, you need to apply chi square test. So, how you will apply chi square test? So, for applying the goodness of fit, the uh, process is different. You need to go to the analyze menu. Then you can go to the descriptive statistics. And from here, you can select the cross steps. Again, I'm repeating go to the analyze menu, then descriptive statistics, and then cross steps. Fine? Yes, fine. Yeah, fine. Thank you. You can click on OK. So once you will click on OK, the pop-up uh, box is coming in front of us, containing all the variables at the left-hand side box. Now you need to shift your variables in the rows and columns. So any of the variable, as we are knowing, we are having two variables, gender and the pet owner, right? Or pet ownership. So we need to shift one variable in the row and one variable in the column. So say, for example, I am shifting my gender variable in the row and pet ownership variable in the column. So this is what I have done here. After that, you need to, although there is no need to uh, check or the click on the exact button, but again, I'm showing you, you can click on that and that way you can see whatever is the by default uh, setting of the SPSS. You do not need to touch that. You need to only press continue. So you can click that. Then you can go to the statistics button. In the statistics button, you need to select the chi-square, the very first option, very first checkbox you need to check. That is chi-square, right? You can press continue. Then you can go to the cells button. And in the cells button, at the upper uh, side, uh, upper left side, you can find 
observed counts under the counts observed is uh, selected you need to select the expected also fine may i okay or may do i need to repeat it again i am repeating you can shift your one variable in the row second in the column then you can click on the statistics button in the statistics button you need to check only the chi square you can press continue in the cells button you can check only the expected all by default observed count or observed frequency is selected by the spss you need to select the expected count also to check the assumption of the chi square test only this you need to select and then you can press continue is it fine yes ma'am then you can press okay once you will press okay the output of the second type of chi square test is coming you can see here it is showing we are having total 20 uh, observations in the combination of gender and the patterner so total um, pair of observations are 20 there is no missing value in the data right so that way we are having total 20 observations coming to the next table it is showing us that uh, for the gender one is representing the male two is representing the female so i suggest you just a minute i'll suggest everyone come and go to the variable view and please define here values so that way it would be better for us to understand the output so right here male one is male two is female female yes and then add and then okay similarly in the pet ownership you can write one is yes and zero is no and then add and then okay now what you need to do you can use this shortcut key uh, and then again you can click on the cross tabs and again you can click on okay to get the output with the categories now you can see we are getting clearly in gender male category right in male and no we are getting total five count in the male and yes we are getting total five count similarly this is the count means this is the observed frequency and expected count means of expected frequency it is 6.5 and 3.5 similarly for female observed frequency is 8 and 2 expected frequency is 6.5 and 3.5 right so that way these are the four categories we are having or four combinations we are having male female no and yes coming down you need to see firstly it is showing in the two cells the expected count is less than 5 as it is quite visible to us 3.5 3.5 it is less than 5 right so that means total four cells are there of the expected count 1 2 3 and 4 and out of four in the two cells expected count is less than 5 that means in the 50% cells the expected count is less than 5 and permitted was 20% only right i hope you can recall the assumption right yes uh, yeah so that way this is the violation of the chi uh, square assumption so in that case if you do not want to report the results of your chi square test you can go for the fisher's exact test also so you can see this is the fisher's exact test and this is the significant value of that so at the two uh, way or at the two uh, uh, two tail test in the fishers p uh, value is 0.35 so 0.35 meaning is it is greater than 0.05 so if it is greater than 0.05 that means you need to go with the null hypothesis and null hypothesis is saying that there is no association between gender and pet ownership or you can call that pet ownership is independent of gender is it clear to all yes ma'am yeah so i think this is all from my side only uh, one thing i am expecting all of you uh, as there is one more variable available in the sheet that is the education that is homework for us no you need to perform right now meanwhile i'll prepare the poll okay yeah ma'am yeah. we call fisher's test also as f test right yeah f test f f is different sir f yeah. test <laughs> is different fisher's yeah. exact is different F test is generally is the ratio of variance. Yeah, ratio of variance. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, 
so uh, yogi sir are you here ajay sir anyone yogi sir can you please make me the co host so that i can prepare the poll yogi sir is it possible for you to make me a uh, co host thank you so much sir those who have performed they can please tell me what results they are getting meanwhile i am preparing the poll for all of you ma'am i'll be taking leave of you to go for a meeting department meeting okay no issue sir thank you ma'am have yeah. a nice day very thank excellent you, presentation ma'am very excellent presentation waiting for tomorrow session also Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Our professor. Our institute has opened, no? So we have department meetings. Cycle. No issues. No Sorry. issues, sir. You please continue okay. with your work. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Have Thank a nice you, day. sir. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, sir. Uh, ma'am uh, as for the results that i am getting okay definitely ma'am uh, four cells have expected count less than 5 so i think we should use the fishers result okay uh four cells uh, out of five is having the frequency less than 5 is it yes ma'am i uh, have okay. checked it for gender on education if gender okay. has any impact on education or not okay and what is uh, the results of fisher's exec we are going with the hypothesis or not um i am actually currently i am not getting the value of fisher i think i have not uh, selected it in the um, the statistics i am selecting it again okay okay i am only getting pearson chi square likelihood ratio and linear by linear association currently uh, okay just am it i'm telling you you can go to the exact ma'am exact button yes ma'am uh you can go to the exact button while you are applying the chi square using the cross tabs right you need yes. to go you need to go to the that button uh first button exact button and in the exact button you need to select the third option exact exact yeah and then again you apply it it is 5 minutes okay yeah and those who okay, have yeah. done yeah those who have done with the particular uh, performance of the chi square test on the data they can go for the uh, poll also although i have i am able to only cap there only first question so please uh, do that Meanwhile, I'm preparing the next.
Phase one is done. Uh, poll one is done. I think only one vote. Uh, no, we have. I got two votes. I think there are uh, 48 people, or I can say around 45 people available in the meeting. So I expect everyone to please respond to the poll. I hope it is visible to everyone, right? Is it visible or not? Yes, ma'am, it is visible. Yes. But ma'am, I am unable to see what poll and where it is. Poll, uh, is it visible to everyone or not? Anyone please confirm me? Those who are able to see, please confirm me. Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Yes, visible, okay. So, sir, where you are able to find it, it is where it is visible to you? On the right lowermost corner of the screen. Okay. So, you need to please check the right most lower corner of the screen. And ma'am, then we have to click on activities. In activities, we have poll. Poll, yes. Oh, yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Means the same way which the way I have used to make this particular or create this poll, same way you need to emphasis it. Yeah. Uh, six responses so far seven, eight, nine. Eleven votes. Oh, good. That means eleven people are active now. It now in a meeting. Twelve. Very good. So may I end the poll? May I? Okay. I am ending the poll. First poll is ended. I hope you can see the results also, right? Visible to everyone, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Now I'm posting the second poll, right? Um, yes. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, where to find results? Would be visible there, there only, ma'am. Uh, first is breakout acti in activities. I hope so because I am I know how to create a poll, <laughs> but I haven't given the poll. Okay, okay. The first is breakout rooms, polls, question and yeah, answer. Yeah, in the you can go to the poll second. Able to find some poll there? Four votes, seven votes. Yes, ma'am. Second poll also I have launched. So in the second poll, uh, so for 10 votes, we got 11. That It is showing that only 11 people are active right now, is it? Please vote. Attempt the poll. If you have heard uh, the session, uh, maybe you would be able to understand what I have written in the poll. 12 votes. Okay, 15 poll, uh, 15 votes. Okay, great. I'm ending the poll number two now, right? Yeah, now I'm launching the last poll. I have launched the last poll also. I hope it is visible to everyone now. This is the last poll of the day.
हमारा है सर यू नीड टू गो टू द एक्टिविटीज एट द राइट बॉटम कॉर्नर यू कैन फाइंड एक्टिविटीज देर आर सर्टन आईकॉन्स अवेलेबल इन दैट यू कैन वंस यू विल पुट योर माउस यू वुड बी रीड इट एट एक्टिविटीज रीड इट एज एक्टिविटीज यू नीड टू क्लिक ऑन दैट राइट once you will click you, there you will get the polls option available in the poll you can find the created poll okay 15 votes we got so far Sixteen, very good. Okay, so I'm ending the poll now. So I'll take all the polls one by one. First one was which one is incorrect? Only the second one was the incorrect. Poll is not visible. Ah, uh, Thamari sir, I have ended the poll. Probably now you would not be able to see. You can only see the results now. so the second uh, option was the incorrect option that non parametric test are based on the population parameters remaining two were the correct right third question uh, second question was a researcher wants to check whether smoking habits is associated with the gender so in that case we will go for the chi square independence of attributes so out of 15 people nine were the correct they said that we should go for the independence of attributes right last one was how we can apply goodness of fit in spss so the correct option is you can go to the analyze non parametric test legacy dialogs and then chi square that is the third option fine everyone so i think this is all from my side for the day tomorrow i'll discuss reliability and the normality analysis and then we'll go ahead from the next day on next day onward i'll go ahead with the parametric test so the agenda of the tomorrow is the normality and the reliability thank you very much ma'am for such a nice session thank you pratima ma'am thank you so much ma'am thank you so much ma'am thank you uh, so anyone here available ajay sir can we wind up now Uh, thank you ma'am for today's session thank you mag being so patient and clearing the doubts again and again <laughs> thank you so very much this is the work of a mentor i think facilitator needs to do that <laughs> we cannot escape uh, escape from this these are very much new for us and uh, we are not the students of statistics so Yeah. yeah i can understand ma'am i can understand that is why i was repeating again and again once the people were yes, saying yes. me to repeat yes yes, yes. we are doing with very much patience <laughs> thanks for that thank you ma'am <laughs> so i think we can stop now right yogi sir are you here anyone so we know? can leave also ma'am yeah we so can we leave can also leave. yeah yeah yogi sir okay thank you so much yogi sir thank and you thank so you everyone ma'am thank you Yes, Ajay sir. Thank you so much. So, sir, we are uh, now ending the session. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.